front court. He'll drive it inside. Manu all the way in, left hand, slam dunk! Wow, Manu, that is why you do the voodoo that you do so well. Welcome to Fast Break, a channel for anything and everything NBA related. In today's video, we'll be going over the legendary career of Manu Ginobili. Everything from his early years overseas to becoming an NBA Hall of Famer. Started from the very beginning, Manu was born and raised in Argentina. He comes from a family of pro basketball players. Both of his brothers played and his father was the coach of a pro team in Argentina. Ginobili started playing pro ball in Argentina at 18 and played for his hometown team through 1997. It was when Manu was playing for Team Argentina in the FIBA Under-21 World Championship that one of the few NBA scouts in attendance, R.C. Buford, took notice of the 20-year-old. This would prove to be a crucial moment in Manu's path to the league. But first, he went to Italy to play for a season before declaring for the NBA draft. In 1999, Ginobili was picked late in the second round with the 57th overall pick by none other than the San Antonio Spurs, the very team that R.C. Buford was scouting for. Manu was actually in a remote area in Brazil at the time, so he didn't even find out about getting drafted until the next morning. Clearly he made an impression, but he didn't sign with the Spurs at this point. Instead, he went back to Italy to play for Kinder Bologna. Ginobili helped them win the 2001 Italian League Championship, the 2001 and 2002 Italian Cups, as well as the 2001 EuroLeague, where he was named EuroLeague Finals MVP. After playing overseas for three seasons, he joined the Spurs in the 2002-2003 NBA season and backed up veteran guard Steve Smith. Early in his first season, he struggled with a nagging injury and found it hard to adjust to the NBA's playstyle. As the injury led up, Manu improved and made all-rookie second team. But still, he only started five games as the Spurs went 60-22 and 22 in the regular season. Remember that at this point in time, players were going straight from high school to the league, so for Ginobili to be a 25-year-old rookie wasn't exactly the norm. Even Greg Popovich told Tim Duncan, This guy is coming, and nobody in the U.S. knows how good he is. In Manu's first postseason, he became a key part of Popovich's playoff rotation. The Spurs took down Phoenix and LA in the first two rounds, and in those games, his scoring ability took opposing players by surprise. He was the cherry on top for the Spurs team that was already ready to make a deep playoff run. He helped get them past the Mavericks in the Western Conference Finals, and then the New Jersey Nets in the Finals to secure the Spurs' second championship and Ginobili's first in just his rookie season. The following year, Manu was featured more often, starting in 38 of the 77 regular season games in which he played. Stat-wise, he improved in all major categories with 13 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists. The Spurs went on to lose to the Lakers in the second round, and while Ginobili didn't start any playoff games, he was a reliable role player. After the season, he would join Team Argentina for the 2004 Athens Summer Olympics. On opening day, Manu made a game-winning buzzer beater with 0.7 seconds left to keep Argentina alive. But the crowning moment came when Argentina became the first team other than Team USA to win the gold medal in 16 years. Team USA was a clear favorite, but Argentina shocked the world, and Manu led the way with 19 points and 3 assists per game. That same summer, Manu re-signed with the Spurs and started every game of the regular season. And this was his best yet. He was the second leading scorer on the Spurs and selected as a reserve for the 2005 Western Conference All-Star team. Come playoff time, Ginobili was on a roll and ended up being one of the key pieces of the Spurs playoff run. San Antonio cruised past their first three opponents until matching up with the defensive-minded Detroit Pistons. The series was back and forth, but in the end, the Spurs came out on top with a close seven-game series. Manu put up career highs averaging 20 points, six rebounds, and four assists on 50% shooting from the field. And when he was off the floor, the Spurs were 20 points worse per 100 possessions. If that's not enough, he also had the third highest point total of any player that postseason while being a runner-up for Finals MVP. Unfortunately, the following year he battled foot and ankle injuries. Ginobili managed to play in 65 regular season games, but most of his stats declined from the previous year. In the playoffs, Ginobili returned to form, but ultimately it wasn't enough as the Spurs were knocked out in the conference semifinals. After a disappointing end to last season, the Spurs got off to a solid start, but they lacked energy from their second unit. So Manu ended up coming off the bench for the back half of the season. 
He put up numbers very similar to his career year in 2005, despite only starting in 36 of 75 games. Regardless, the Spurs went off to the races when the playoffs began, only losing four games in the first three rounds. San Antonio would go on to sweep the Cavaliers in the finals to capture Ginobili's third championship. Fresh off another championship, Manu had his absolute peak setting career highs in points, rebounds, assists, and three-point percentage. During the season on a February night, Ginobili put up 34, 15, and 6 in a win over Toronto to become the first guard in Spurs history to have 15 points and 15 rebounds in a single game. Only a few months later, the NBA announced that Manu had won the 6th Man of the Year award with 123 of the 124 first place votes. At 31 minutes per game, he averaged 19 points, 4 assists, and 5 rebounds on 46% shooting while being named to his first All-NBA team. He wasn't thrilled about coming off the bench, but he put his ego aside for the betterment of the team. When Manu was presented the trophy, Popovich acknowledged this by saying, he probably wants to take it and shove it up my... <laughs> the Spurs breezed past the Suns in the first round of the playoffs, but after going down 2-0 to the Pelicans, Ginobili was moved to the starting lineup. This helped the Spurs come back and win the series in seven games with Ginobili leading the team in points and assists with 21-6. and six. However, their run would come to an end when San Antonio lost to the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. In 2009, Manu played in only 44 regular season games before getting injured and missing the playoffs entirely. It's safe to say 2009 wasn't their year, as the Spurs would get eliminated in the first round of the playoffs for the first time since 2000. Post-injury Ginobili was still in his prime, averaging 17 points and 5 assists over the next two seasons. In 2011, he was considered the best player on the team, making the second All-Star and All-NBA team while finishing 8th in MVP voting. The following year, the NBA had a lockout shortened season, but Manu and the Spurs still managed to go 50-16. and 16. While this was Ginobili's first time averaging less than 13 points since his second year in the league, he was still very effective, shooting 52% from the field. San Antonio got all the way to the Western Conference Finals before being eliminated by OKC in six games. Manu was entering a later phase of his career, coming off the bench again, but still averaging double digits in around 22 minutes per game. In 2013, the Spurs made it to the finals to face LeBron in the Heat. In Game 5, Ginobili scored 24 off the bench to help them take a 3-2 lead. Unfortunately, the Spurs lost back-to-back -back games and the series. San Antonio bounced back strong from the devastating loss by posting a league-best 62-20 record, with Ginobili finishing third and sixth man of the year voting. In the postseason, the Spurs got all the way to the finals where they would face off against the Heat for the second straight year. This time, San Antonio left nothing on the table and dominated the Heat, winning the series 4-1 to to capture Ginobili's fourth championship and the last title of the Spurs dynasty. The Spurs were still competitive after that championship run in 2014, but the big three of Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker were all nearing the end of their careers. Manu gave us one more vintage moment in Game 5 of the 2017 Western Conference Semifinals against Houston. In the closing seconds, he blocked James Harden's attempted game-tying three to secure the victory for San Antonio. A year later, Ginobili announced his retirement from pro basketball. And the year after that, the Spurs will retire Manu's number 20 jersey right next to teammate Tim Duncan's jersey. The cherry on top is Ginobili becoming the 12th Spurs player to be inducted into the Hall of Fame over this past year, which was well deserved. When it comes to his play style, Ginobili was known as a clutch and versatile guard with an up-tempo and aggressive style. Early in his career, teammate Brent Barry even nicknamed him El Contusion for his breakneck and injury-prone style of play. Manu's go-to move was either a three-pointer or a vicious drive to the basket in the hopes of drawing contact. It was normal for him to lower his head when driving so he could collapse the defense and create open shots for his teammates. Another move for Ginobili was a Euro step. And while he wasn't the first player to use this move, he was definitely the one to popularize it. He was also a great team player, embracing the six-man role and setting up teammates with difficult to defend passes, especially the no-look. Currently, Ginobili is San Antonio's all-time leader in three-point field goals made and steals, while also having the eighth most playoff wins of all time. Not only that, but Manu is also the first all-time in NBA Finals plus-minus with plus 177, just to give you an idea of how impactful he was on the biggest stage in basketball. Overall, Manu had one of the most underrated careers in NBA history. Not only is he considered the greatest six-man ever, but also one of the best second-round picks of all time. Ginobili and the Spurs went head-to-head -head with some of the game's all-time great players, and more often than not, it was the Spurs coming out on top. LeBron and the Cavs, 
Kobe and Shaq, Miami's Big Three, and even the Splash Bros. The Spurs dynasty wouldn't have been complete without Ginobili's tremendous play. He was a crafty leader with tremendous on-court awareness and feel for the floor of the game. With a very polished game on both ends of the floor, any team could have used Mono on their team. And yet, every team passed on him twice. Thankfully, R.C. Buford was at the FIBA Under-21 World Championship because the Spurs and Ginobili ended up being the perfect fit. Thanks for watching. Make sure to let us know what video you think we should do next down in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more NBA content.